We're in it. It's spring. We are in it. It is baseball season. We've got our baseball jerseys, got our baseball hats, Giants all day, Dodgers super suck. Three, two, one, bro. Everybody, my name is Nick Murphy. I am one half of the Brothers Murph, and this is You Can Solo That, a series where I go through the different games in our collection that you can solo, and I solo them and talk about how good I think they are. And I'm not really a solo gamer, so I think it's kind of an interesting perspective when solo gaming isn't really my thing. But as I said, it is baseball season. I got my baseball gear on. There's actually a baseball game on a mute in the background over there, a Giants game, of course. So, since it's baseball season, you know I'm going to be reviewing Baseball Highlights 2045. Baseball Highlights 2045 is a little deck builder game, and this game really simulates baseball. This is a game where if you don't like baseball, I still think you would like it because it's a very intriguing game. It's got a very a lot of very intriguing mechanics to it. But if you really do like baseball, this game is amazing. Because not only is it a great game, it really feels like baseball. You're really reacting to what the other player is doing. You're playing cards, and those cards are either going to have defensive moves like gloves, which take away the other player's hits, but they'll also have different hits on them, like singles and doubles and triples and home runs. Yay. We love baseball. Mike is a baseball fanatic. I'm a very large baseball fan. He likes it a little bit more than I do. But I still love, love, love baseball. One of my favorite movies in my top five is the movie A League of Their Own. I love it so, so much. It is just such a good movie. Such a good movie that I just, ah, uh, I wish it was my life, you know? Are you crying? What? Are you crying? Are you crying? No. There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. What? She's crying, sir. Okay. Anyone ever tell you you look like a penis with a little hat on? I mean, I don't know why I have to say that. I just live here. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But in any way, we're going to solo Baseball Highlights 2045, which is not a league of their own. This takes place in the future, where baseball has been down in the dumps. And you're like all the businessmen are like, hmm, how can we make baseball better? I know, robots. Robots and cyborgs. So they start bringing robots in, which are super crazy good hitters. They start bringing in cyborgs. They cut off pitchers' arms, give them some crazy cyborg arm, and they can start pitching like 150 miles an hour. All sorts of crazy. It's actually a really cool theme that I would love to see like a movie about. Um, I think it'd be super, super cool. But again, it's one of my favorite games. It's my favorite deck building game. And I've never soloed it because I don't play solo games very often. But now is the time. Right here, right now. Let's see how it plays. Let's see how it solos. Let's play ball. All right. So this is the setup and playthrough for... Baseball Highlights 2045 Solo Edition. So you're going to set up a board for yourself and then a board that represents an AI opponent in this game. You're going to be the one simulating both, but it's actually really, really easy and I'll show why. So we'll say this side is me and then this side is the AI player. You are always going to be the visitor and the AI player is always going to be home. Always. It'll never change the other way around. For the solo game, you're going to play a seven game series. So you are going straight into the World Series. Bang, bang, World Series. Woo! Make sure to have the free agent deck out here. We have all the expansions, which is why we have so many cards. And they're all sleeve, which makes the stack very, very large. Put out the fast, the average, and the slow runners in a spot where you can easily reach them. Give yourself a little bat token, put it on the zero, and give yourself a little ballpark token. Put it on the zero over here and do the same thing for your AI opponent over here. For you, you're going to choose one of the starting decks. Just any of the starting decks. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go ahead and play with Pan Asia here just because I think the green color is cool and I think that Pan Asia would be a cool team. Woo! And then your AI opponent is just going to get the top 15 cards from the free agent deck. So you're going to give them a good shuffle and then draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 cards off the deck. 
and this is their team. Their team will never change. They never buy any more cards. They just have this. So they start off, frankly, way better than you, but you're gonna be gaining more cards throughout the game, but you do start off at a bit of a disadvantage. One thing I like to do is go through their cards, just give them a quick look-see, just to make sure they didn't get like all defensive cards or all offensive cards. Make sure they have a decent mix, but don't like cherry pick anything. Just kind of give a quick glance, go, yeah, that's cool, and then go on. And you're gonna put that over here in their lineup. Now, we can't start you off with just your basic B deck and have them start off with 15 free agent players. You're going to get smashed out. And while the solo game is hard, we don't want it to be quite that hard. So what we're going to do is a little bit of a draft. Now, this is a variant that you can play with in a normal game if you want to, but you really kind of have to play with it in this game. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw out six cards from the top of your deck, just like you would if you were playing a game but instead of playing these cards you're just gonna flip them over and look at their values each one of your cards is gonna have a value up here in the corners so this one is two then one then two then one then one and then two so what you do is you count up all these values so that's two three four five six seven eight nine and then you're gonna have six cards out here that you get to choose from now this is the same way you buy at the end of every game you play in Baseball Highlights 2045. You're just skipping the whole game part of it. So you take the total value of that group of cards like you played a game and then you get to choose one of these that are out here. We had nine, let's go ahead and choose AI Homer, this guy. He's gonna go into your hand and then you again, like you do in a normal game, take one card, put it in your minor leagues and then you do it again. And so again, six cards, you can wipe all these out, bring a whole new six out, six more cards, find the value, and then draft another player. Now you can technically draft as many times as you want. The game suggests that you draft two for a nice challenge, three, four, but it even says you can draft none if you want to. In regards to not drafting any characters and just starting with your basic deck, in the rules it says, no buy rounds, very tough to beat, but let me know if you do. So I wouldn't suggest that. I mostly play with three. It seems like a pretty good mix. It's still pretty tough to win, but again, it's up to you. So you can actually scale the difficulty a little bit based off how many cards you draft. So let's say I drafted three total and I put two more down here in my minors. All, okay, 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 Nick, Nick. There we go, nailed it, freaking nailed it. Nailed it so hard, nailed it. So after that, you are ready to start the game. Now let's go over how the game plays. For the most part, it plays like a normal game. It's actually very, very similar to a normal game with some small differences, which we'll go over now. On your turn, you're gonna draw your six cards like you normally do, and you're actually gonna play pretty much in the exact same way that you usually do. You can still utilize your on deck spot by putting something in your on deck and then drawing the next card in your hand, giving you a bit more of an option. And you're gonna play these cards in any order that you want, just like you do in a normal game. The difference mostly comes with this AI character, but even then it plays very simply. You're gonna go ahead and just draw the top six cards off the AI deck. And then you're just going to put them to the side somewhere reachable. On your turn, you're going to play whatever you want, but then you're just going to draw and play the top card of the AI deck. You don't look through it. You don't choose anything. You just play the top card and you do whatever it says. And then you play your card. You react to whatever this card is. And then you know it. Boom. Play the next card. You play a card and then you play the next card. So you're really just reacting off whatever the AI character is. Though our AI character never, ever, ever uses their on deck spot and never pinch hits. Again, you just draw the top card of their deck, boom, play it, and that's what it is. Now, that means you really never know what's gonna come, but that is really how it is in the normal game. And you're both gonna keep playing until each person's played all of their cards. You will still get a visitor save just like you do in a normal game and then you see who won. If the game goes to extra innings, you play it like you normally do. You draw three cards off the top of the deck, decide which one you wanna play. I wanna play this one, and you go ahead and you play it. But the AI character doesn't do that. You just draw the top card off their deck, boom, play it, see what it is, and then see if anybody won. If it's a tie again, you get to choose one from your remaining two cards, and then again, top of the deck, Boom, done. If you tie again, you just keep going, going, going until somebody wins. At the end of each game, you count up the value on all your different cards here, 
and you do the same thing. You get to buy someone from the free agent deck. If you do, you put them on top of your deck here, send someone from your hand down to the miners, and then you continue play. But again, the AI deck never, ever, ever gets more people. They start with the 15 they have, and that's it for the whole game. You play a World Series to so say you win four games, they win three, game seven, bottom of the ninth, hit a dinger, walk off homer, you won, you rule. You play a seven game series and you see if you can beat the AI. It's pretty tough. So that's how you play Baseball Highlights 2045 Solo Edition. So that was Baseball Highlights 2045. Oh, I love this game. And you know what? I actually like it solo too. In a solo game, it actually plays like a normal game. Um, it actually isn't all that much different than if you're playing just a two-player game. Because this game is a two-player game. You can play three and four, but it's a two-player game. Let's be honest. And like I said, it actually plays relatively similarly. It doesn't seem like it would because you just have the AI deck, which is really, really strong. And all they do is just play the top card of the deck. They have no choices. It's just boom. They don't have on decks. They have no pinch hitters. They don't ever get any more people. It's just boom, 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 boom. But it feels like a normal game because in a normal game, you have no idea what cards your opponent has. So you have no idea what they have, how they're going to be able to stymie your plans. Ah, oh, damn it. You suck. You suck. I hate you. I hate you. You suck. You suck. And so a lot of the game is like getting into your opponent's head like, oh, are they going to play a glove if I play a triple? But in this, you actually have the same amount of uncertainty because you don't really know what the AI character has in their deck and you certainly don't know which of the six 15 cards they have. And so you can play a double home run and all of a sudden, boom, double glove, they're gone. And it actually feels pretty much the same. Uh, you can't react quite as much. You can't like trick your opponent into doing something. But even then, it still feels really cool and it still feels really organic. It doesn't really bog down the game at all. Speaking of not bogging down the game, one of my biggest pet peeves in solo games is when I have to do a whole bunch of stuff for the AI player. Like if I have to be the one who decides this, 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 and this, or I have to do this and change this and move this and do this and do this, and then I get to do my turn and then I have to go back and do their whole thing. To me, it just feels like I'm playing a two player game with just me. This does not feel that way. I get to do the whole brooding and thinking about what I want to do and what I want to play, boom. And then for my AI person, I just go, boop, flip over a card, done. That's it. You don't have to do anything else. I find that very nice. You don't have to buy new cards. You don't have to do the whole sending who down to the miners or on deck or pinch hitting. No, it's just top card. You get to extra innings, I get my three cards and I'm like, ooh, what am I going to play? What am I going to do? And then, then, boop, top card. And it's super nice. It plays super quickly in, in the terms of the AI character. And it's just, there's no thinking, it's just boom, you just do it, and I like that. I think that's very, very nice in a solo game when you don't have to play the other player too, too much. I don't mind AI characters, but I don't want to have to essentially play two different characters in the whole game. I also like that you can choose to make the game harder or easier for yourself with the beginning draft. Because you can do, in the beginning draft where you're just drafting cards straight up, you can do as many as you want. You can do zero, or you can do ten, and you can kind of make it as easy as you want it to be. And I like that. I enjoy games that, that have a, a scaling difficulty that you get to choose. I think that's nice. And the fact that the AI player never gets to choose what cards come out, they just come out, come out randomly. A lot of times the AI character is not necessarily playing all that smartly. They're just putting out cards. But that balances the fact that they have way better cards than you. Because at the beginning of the game, you only have three free agent players, whereas they have 15. So if they played a card and you're like, well, that's a dumb time to play that card. Yeah, but if they played all their cards at the, op the most opportune time, you would get slaughtered. I mean, absolutely slaughtered. And the game is still pretty hard. I played where I... I always play where I draft three characters because it's kind of a good balance and it's still really hard. I almost always go to a six or seven game series, which is really, really cool in my opinion. Overall, I really, really like it. It's got win-lose. You either beat the AI character or you don't. I love win-lose. Overall, I think it's a great little solo game. Pretty quick, pretty easy. Really, really nice. And it feels like the normal game. I love it, love it, love it. This is a great solo game. This is... Baseball Highlights 2045 Solo Edition. You can solo that? You can play solo baseball? I don't need nine players on each team. No, you don't. Boom. You can solo that. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you later. Baseball.
Thanks for checking out the Brothers Murph. We are sponsored by Restoration Games and there's great information for where you can find them in the description below. Now what I want you to do is click something else here and I'm gonna make this noise until you click away.